is a heresy in that church. And I never realized that. Because they don't believe that. You know, they have a system of, uh, um, I forget the term they've used that. Um, Some penance. Yeah, you know, where they use penance, uh, the stations of the cross. Uh, there's, a, there's a rosary. There's a whole list of things, and it's really based on a works faith. And it's not just them, but many different religions of the world, they all operate the same way. We have to do something, okay? But Paul, what he's saying here is that what he was fighting with, with people saying, well, if this is true that Christ died and, and we've, we accept that sacrifice with faith and trust in him, that since we have all this grace now, that we can live the way we want to. And so really from a, a sin standpoint, well, the more we sin, the more grace God will provide. You know, it's a complete... <clears throat> per, yeah, complete perversion of grace. What Vody was saying here is that when we come to Christ, God changes our heart. You know, God is in the business of changing hearts. I mean, it's throughout Scripture. I'm creating you a new heart. It's that behavior that He's changing. It's our heart, that, and that's what we desperately need to change. Um, I've used the illustration before. Uh, you know that, and you see them on TV time. You got these dogs that they just, you know, people have trained to march certain ways, to try certain ways, go through these little obstacles. You know, people have these little Shih Tzus. You know, they're all dolled up. They're and cleaned up and all this stuff. You let that dog in its natural state, it will start looking at itself. It will do its business wherever it wants to. I we had a dog, uh, you know, sometimes I go, why do you smell so bad? And here he'd be rolling on in some dead thing out in the yard. And you know what? That little $4,000 toy dog is going to do the same thing. You give him a chance, he'll around in the dead stuff because his heart hasn't changed. Because he, he, don't like that. And to the dogs, that's natural. It is natural. And see, when you're dealing with the world, you're dealing with the natural man. The natural man is what he does. We're seeing it on TV what man is really like. And you know what? It's a lot worse. And it shouldn't size us. You know, our country is a battle of what it used to be. You know, I mean, I've been in the 60s and the 70s. And that's my era. I know you guys were probably in the 50s. That's your, and I wish I could have grew up in the 50s. That was a cool time, I think. I thought it was a really good time. But, you know, I was in like the 60s and the 70s. And, man, it's nothing like, I mean, it wasn't that. I mean, we had, you know, I mean, I used to watch my mom, Walter Cronkite, every night. So many GIs we lost in Vietnam. And, man... I don't want to get older because I don't want to end up there, you know. So things all that super, you know. But compared to today? No, they were burning joy. They were riding in Chicago. Just yeah, 68, I remember. Well, yeah, and we left Cleveland to, you know, move out in the country in 1970. So my dad said, we've got to get out. And today, the neighborhood that I grew up in is a ghetto. It is worse than Beirut. My brother made the mistake of going there and going his wife at the time, uh, you know, the neighborhood. And he gets out of the car and starts walking around the block. And within a short time, they were starting to come out and, you know, come at and, and it's all he could do to get in his car and get out of there. And I just walked from that house, you know, eight blocks to school every two, three days a day, morning, lunch, and come at night. You would never do that today. So man is not evolving, we're devolving. So, but when God comes in and changes the heart, we are a different person. So uh, Paul here, and you see the heart in these verses when he's saying, what shall we say? Are we to continue in sin that grace would increase? May it never be. How shall we who die in sin still live in it? This is the thing that, what he was saying, we really don't understand 
the gospel and all the technical aspects of salvation. We just have to trust and believe. And, it, and it's not till now, a year later, that I'm starting to get glimpses of different things, how my heart did change. I, had a diff, I have a different value. I remember one of the things when I was a kid, you know, it wasn't easy growing up in my family. Um, I was not uh, encouraged and said I was going to be good, this and that. I mean, it, anything, anything opposite. But I can tell you one thing, when I put my faith in Christ, all of a sudden I had value that I never sensed before. I felt like God, well, I mean, if He could die for me, and I put my faith and trust in Him, there's value in that. Do you realize that? The ones that God chose and brings to Himself, they have value. You don't have that in the system, but you have value as a believer. I mean, God paid a very high price for us, and He's not going to reject you at some point. Um, once you're His, you're His. But along comes with that is a change of heart. So, now in verse 3, Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized to his death? This is one of the things people technically don't understand. That when we come to Christ, you are literally dead to sin. So, in, and in turn, when you die to sin, you die to self, you're actually being alive to God. You have of some value because God does something with you. You can't do anything with you before because you're dead in your trespasses and sins. And you can't come out of it on your own, on our own. God has to step in, do the work, make something out of you so you can be of value. And so we have an infinite risk because God paid for this. So in verse 4, Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism to death. So this is just some... Um, you know, we all like to laud people who you know, step in the baptist and, you know, get wet and come out, right? That's not the end all. You know, unfortunately, you got a lot of these family members who are very unsaved, you know, come to their granddaughter or their kid's baptism because that's the big thing. You know? But that's not the end all. That's just the beginning. You know, I remember, uh, you know, they make a deal about high school graduations, and people still go back to high school reunions. When you really, I'm like, why do, do that in college? You only do that in high school. You only you spend four years, but apparently it's a big four years because people keep going back every five to ten years. It's a big thing. But when you graduate, that's just the beginning of your life. You know, that's not the end. But I have friends who still. Man, it took them decades to get over. They just, they keep living high school, you know? I'm like, man, get over it, you know? The life actually starts at 18. I mean, if you join the military, you tend to, oh, by the way, I found out reading through the ultimate. Biblically, the God didn't, didn't ask military guys to join at 18. The age was 20. You know that? It's actually age 20 not 18, that God actually wanted you in the military. No, and no, actually it was service. So anyway, so what actually starts at 18? So, here we are in uh, verse 4. I'll just start it. Therefore we have been buried with him through baptism into death in order that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so he too might walk in newness of life. So our life actually begins as we raise up out of the water. As, and don't be mistaken, our baptism isn't salvation. It's a visual of what happens when we die, buried, and come to life in Christ. It's a picture. There again, I hate I'm in the Catholic Church, but it's so easy. Um, you know, it is a huge emphasis on Baptism, um, when you're an infant, and I, I was, you know, I don't remember it, but to them, that is salvation. You're actually saved from eternal 
damnation by that baptism. That's how much power they put in that. But yet, that is not in the Bible at all. You cannot be saved from baptism in a water. And you can be in, I don't care, you can fake it, go through a class and get baptized here, but now this is a change in your heart, okay? That doesn't do you any good. We are, you know, no longer living for God. It's a completely different concept. So in verse 5, For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, see, we're identifying with Christ, his death, certainly we shall be also the likeness of his resurrection. That is the eternal hope in Christ. I mean, my wife and I talk about this a lot. I mean, we're all going to die. I mean, there is 100% certainty of this, okay? I mean, I wish we could be right, and I would love that, right? But I have a chance of winning the Ohio Maximilian Lottery than that, okay? <laughs> How many of you signed up for that? <laughs> yeah, so... The fact is, we're all going to die. It's just, there's no way around it. But the hope of that is that, you know, the Lord was resurrected in three days bodily. We're not going to be. It's at a later time. But the picture of how glorious that is, Christ raised from the dead, and we get to experience the same thing. Verse 6, so knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him, that a body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. And this is what a lot of people misconstrue, and I think we make a mistake as believers. We'll say, well, you know, God should change your life and, and you know, turn it into, you know, a whole new thing. And, you know, you kind of, there, it's not that easy. The Christian life is not easy. Um, because there's a sanctification process that goes along with it. The moment we're justified, that's not the end. That's just the beginning. God's goal is to transform us into becoming like His Son. That's the plan. That's the goal. That's why we're left here. I mean, the thing across didn't even get a chance to get sanctified. I mean, he, he got to glory within an hour or two. But for the rest of us, we get to be sanctified. In verse 7, He who has died is free from sin. So there's the, uh, another hope is that we are no longer slaves to this sin. Um, and when scripture says we died to sin, he means business. I mean, and, and by nature, we would want to please God. You know, just like uh, if when we were uh, kids in our parent home, we want to please our parents. And our kids want to please us. Uh, because, you know, we want to be loved, and that should be our desire for God, is we want to please Him. We want to be obedient. Before we couldn't, I remember going to confession and leaving this box and being out the door and a guilt of sin was still there because my heart was not been changed. My heart still was in rebellion. I love thinking bad thoughts and want to do stuff and do whatever. But when God changes us, it's the heart that changes and He wants us to change. Because we're able to change before we can. In verse 8, now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall all live with him. And this is the hope that we have as believers that we are going to live with him, say. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, is not to die again. Death no longer is master over him. For death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, lives to God. Um, you guys heard of the slave trader, late slave trader John Newton? He was in, uh, his era was in the 1700s. 
and he